Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse, and in today's segment I want to discuss the Zika virus with you. What you should know, there's a lot of stuff floating around right now in the media, so I wanted to go over what is the virus, what are its symptoms, what does it potentially cause, what can we do about it, and should we be really concerned? So let's read the official breakdown of Zika virus from the CDC. Here we go. Zika virus is spread to people through mosquito bites. The most common symptoms of Zika virus are fever, rash, joint pain, and conjunctivitis, also known as red eyes. The illness is usually mild, with symptoms lasting from several days to a week. Severe disease requiring hospitalization is uncommon. Okay, so essentially Zika virus is a nasty disease that has fever and, and breakouts of the skin, okay, associated with joint pain. Sounds kind of like a flu with a rash, right? Um, it's similar in its characteristics, the way that it's classified to another virus, dengue fever, which is, which is also known as breakbone fever. Um, having known several people who have contracted dengue fever, it's a nasty disease. But Zika virus is being feared right now. People are concerned about it for a different set of reasons. Primarily, the effect it seems to have on babies while they are growing. There's been a fair number of cases, quite a lot actually, of babies born in countries with Zika virus with microcephaly. Microcephaly is essentially a restriction in the brain growth of these children. Okay, so these babies are born with a decreased brain size and that leads essentially to a high risk of lifelong difficulties, complications, etc. Um, and a decrease in the overall quality of life and developmental um, progress of the child. Okay, So why is there this big sudden like, oh we got to do something about Zika right now? Let's ask ourselves a few questions here. Um, the, the World Health Organization and a lot of the big alphabet soup health organizations around the world responsible for the global initiatives. Um, they are pushing for Zika virus to get more funding, more play in the media for a whole bunch of different reasons. But I want to talk about the transmission specifically and why I'm not concerned about Zika virus being a, a pandemic, okay? Zika virus is a primarily vector-borne disease. This is very important to understand. A vector-borne disease is essentially a middleman in transmission of a disease to people. In this case, the vector or the middleman is a particular species of mosquito. Okay, And what's really got people afraid is, oh, now it can be spread through sexual contact. Um, I, I would like to point something out here, guys. A lot of the fear of Zika being spread person to person, I would submit, is significantly overblown, okay? You are much more likely to contract genital herpes through having sex than you are through Zika virus, okay? And genital herpes has effects on newborns as well if there are, are lesions present in the birth canal when the baby is born, okay? It can cause blindness of, of a child, all right? So we have to ask ourselves, what, like, Kibono, who benefits? Like, what is the purpose in spinning up all of this, like, fear, fear, fear? Some people would say, like, on the beneficent side of the World Health Organization, you know, giving them the nod of, okay, everything's cool, that they're just trying to protect the world's health because the Olympics are coming up in Rio and we don't want people getting bit by these mosquitoes and then bringing it back and potentially having that same mosquito, even though it doesn't live in non tropical climates. Um, having that same mosquito bite them and spread it across the population. All right? If we look at the actual factors that have to be present in order for this disease to spread, there has to be mosquitoes, all right, lots of them, biting lots of people in an environment where these mosquitoes can live, okay, and then potentially these people having sex, going back and forth, potentially spreading this. But again, this disease primarily is spread through a vector, through the mosquito, not through human beings, all right. So it, do I think it's being overblown right now? Absolutely. Um, why would it be overblown? For this, I would like to turn to a common publication, the Wall Street Journal, all right. I'm going to read just a small segment here uh, to prove my point. This is an op-ed piece, and the author of the piece, his name is Scott Gottlieb. I hope I pronounced his name right. The little um, conflict of interest bit down there, you know, the little like, hey, this is their quick bio. Let me tell you about the person who wrote the following um, paper, and I hope you'll stay with me because this is critically important that you understand, all right? Dr. Gottlieb, a physician and resident fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, read Neocon Think Tank, was previously a Food and Drug Administration Deputy Commissioner. He consults with and invests in drug companies, all right? 
So the push to, hey, Zika virus, Zika virus, we got to prepare, we got to do listen to why all right i'm going to spare you reading the entirety of the article but um, let me read with some context the main gist of it in the u.s zika will likely confine itself to small and isolated outbreaks largely in florida and the gulf coast region where the mosquito that transports the virus is most prevalent hello vector borne disease <laughs> the vector has to be there in order to spread the disease but that doesn't diminish the need for a stronger global response Keep in mind that the individual writing this article has strong benefits if anything sells as a result of it, okay? Um, it starts with mosquito control. But most of all, vaccines to abate these threats are essential. Government grants can't sustain these efforts because the money is usually too modest to offset the cost and risk of drug development. A market for these efforts is needed, one that will depend on sustainable funding, read taxpayer dollars, for buying and administering the drugs and vaccines that can prevent Zika and other evolving biological threats. A vaccine to stop Zika should be within scientific reach, given the recent development of a vaccine for dengue fever, a disease with similarities to Zika. In both cases, the main reservoir for the virus is humans. Mosquitoes, through their bite, merely carry the virus from one infected victim to a new human victim. If the virus could be eliminated in people, it could be largely eliminated from, the, from circulation. Again, Taxpayer dollars are going to fund private companies in this. The widespread use of vaccines could eradicate many of these emerging threats, but the costs of such mass vaccination are prohibitive. So it is generally agreed that even if a successful vaccine existed, few of the most susceptible countries would use it. That is what is happening with the dengue fever vaccine, approved for use in only four countries, including Brazil, and not widely administered. One solution would be to read this important part. One solution would be to would be to use debt instruments to amortize upfront costs. Debt instruments to amortize upfront costs. Non-governmental bodies like the World Health Organization, could back vaccine bonds to improve the ability to attract the financing. This could provide a far more reliable framework for financing the purchase of enough vaccine necessary to mount an effective eradication program. The Gates Foundation's effort to stamp out malaria and even the World Health Organization's successful role in eradicating smallpox show that a galvanized world can make dramatic gains in fighting diseases. But such fortitude is the exception Instead, the lesson of SARS, avian flu, swine flu, and Ebola is that political resolve and funding flourish after a threat has exploded and shrivel once the immediate danger abates. Here's the entire gist of the article. An economic framework is needed to support these efforts before threats spiral out of control and to sustain them long after the immediate risks subside. Dr. Gottlieb, a physician and resident fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, was previously a Food and Drug Administration Deputy Commissioner. He consults with and invests in drug companies. I see no conflict of interest there, insert heavy sarcasm. Guys, this is what I want to drive home with you. All right, A lot of the hype with Zika is just that. All right, It is primarily a vector-borne disease. It is not primarily a contagious disease, all right? The things that we need to stop, breathe, and look at here are how is this disease spread, what are the symptoms, and what can we do to eradicate it? With a vector-borne disease, your best bet is to eradicate the vector. Cut out the middleman, right? We do this in business all the time, okay? Like, if you want to make sure that things get done right, you cut out the middleman, okay? So eradication of the mosquito is important. And we can do simple things around our locations. I know I got people in the Gulf Coast who are like, what am I supposed to do now? Try and cut down on mosquito breeding grounds on your property, okay? There are sitting pools of water, don't let them be there, okay? Uh, and ironically enough, there is a particular historical uh, place that we can point to. When Israel was first being um, built, there was a terrible problem with malaria being spread, okay? And, the, and a lot of people were getting sick and dying from malaria in Israel. And when um, civil engineers and environmental engineers came and took a look at the place, they looked at these festering swamps, okay? The ones that all the environmentalists want to protect. They looked at these festering swamps and they're like, hello, mosquito breeding ground number one here. That's a problem, okay? And so as a result of the, the draining and the, the management of these, these places, malaria was like, went down to the floor after that, okay? 
So the primary thing that we need to do here is to look at management of, of the vector, cutting down on the vector, cutting down on the mosquitoes. And if you're really that concerned about sexual transmission of Zika, strap on a rubber. Okay, you know, it is to me when I look at a lot of the the heartstrings that people are pulling on, and please, I am not, I am not um, dismissing the experiences of the parents who have had these children who they expected to be happy, healthy babies born with microcephaly. I am not diminishing that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but I think we need to stop and take pause here for a moment. I think that these pictures that are being put out on the media are pulling on the heartstrings and the fear of people to say, okay, we must give money, we must do something here. The fear, the heartstring tugging, the emotional response, that is exactly what people like that are expecting you to believe, okay? So long story short, I think Zika is way overblown, but I wanted to touch base with you guys on that. Your best, bet are to, best bets are to cut down on the mosquitoes. If you're that concerned about it, you can wear mosquito repellent, all right? There are lots of different things. Citronella oil is a good one. If you really want to repel mosquitoes and humans, have a heavy consumption of garlic in your life. It works for me every time. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But yes, I think that the focus here needs to be on prevention of the vector growing, right? So mosquito control programs here, and you can do a lot in your backyard and in your area uh, to facilitate this and also just wear mosquito repellent. I'm not concerned about Zika going back and forth between human beings in some epidemic level. I just don't see it happening primarily because that's not how this disease is mainly spread. It's spread through the mosquito. So breathe a big sigh, take a big breath and ha, ah, okay. So in summary, spend your prepping dollars and your prepping worries on other things, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please subscribe to me, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. If you would like to learn more about how to take care of your families in disasters and everyday stuff, come out to class. Medical Prep 101 and 201 are happening all over the country. Check out the website for the full schedule. I would love to see you there. We have a lot of fun in class. We have husbands, wives, couples, groups come together in class and it is a marvelous experience. You get to meet like-minded people. The interesting thing, every time I, I get done with class, the students will come up to me and they'll be like, this was so refreshing. I don't have to explain myself. It's so nice to be in a room of like-minded people. You know, I feel like I belong. So I really would encourage you to come out there. We have a great time. You will learn skills, knowledge, everything to get you uh, squared away for the short, medium, and long-term disasters, guys. I hope it was helpful for you all. And for now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.